Taught me. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your time today. Rachel Aubrey and I will be bringing you through our Live Nation design project. We are really excited to share this with you. So let's get rocking. <laughs> now, Live Nation is the world's leading live entertainment company who brings artists around the world to various live sets and festivals. They bring 40,000 shows and sell over 500 million tickets per year. However, like many businesses in 2020, Live Nation greatly struggled. Now I wanna pose this question to you, the audience. How much revenue do you think Live Nation lost in 2020? A lot. Yeah, probably not enough though. Not uh, way more than what you're thinking. I promise you that. So they lost seven billion dollars in revenue in 2020. However, things are looking up. Live Nation anticipates that 95% of fans are planning to return. And as a group, we got together and we started to ask, well, what about that other five percent? Quick math for you mathematicians at home. 5% of 500 million tickets sold per year is 25 million. And that's 25 million reasons to conduct user interviews, to generate new ideas, to give the people live music. Now we conducted six user interviews and discovered some major opportunities. Pre-COVID, users went anywhere from four to 30 concerts per year. They preferred being closer to the artists in a more intimate setting. And their fondest memories of shows included dancing, being with their friends, and sometimes even dressing up like the band. When asked about their current live stream habits, most users didn't do any, fearing that it would not be the same. So when we got in touch with a marketing manager over at Live Nation, for a subject matter expert interview. Our biggest takeaway is there is a place for live streaming to continue. So what is that, what does the competitive market actually look like for live stream concerts? Competition is not as clear as it may seem. We conducted a feature inventory audit of three direct and four indirect competitors. The opportunity for Live Nation really lies within the ability to keep customers and fans on their app. Live Nation, Songkick, Band is in Town, all redirect users to other streaming sites like Twitch, live sessions, and no cap shows. By keeping the user on the platform and offering a full end-to-end -end solution, you can add additional revenue streams like upgrade options, sweet merch, and VIP bundles like a meet and greet or quick little uh, qu uh, question and answer. Those are the business benefits. Now let's define how this can benefit the individual user. So what is that individual user looking for? The user needs a streaming experience that's intimate and memorable in a post COVID world where both live concerts and streaming exist. How might we provide supplemental streaming experiences for users that feel intimate and memorable? Meet Sam. Sam works in tech and pre-COVID kept up a pretty healthy concert lifestyle with up to 10 concerts a year. During the pandemic, she dis discovered live streaming as a way to stay in touch with her favorite musicians. She didn't miss being elbow to elbow with strangers, but she did miss the company of being with friends while watching. She is looking for a way to have the best of both worlds live streaming for her favorite musicians and watching with her friends. The user flow for Live Nation has two independent flows. One of them is for Sam's ticket purchase where along the way she adds her friends that she would like to invite to come along with her. The second flow is an independent event lane where Sam and her friends join the streaming space together for an experience that they'll be bragging about at work the next day. The site map was divided into two. The maps here are divided purely by device. One map is for the mobile device and the other is for the streaming interface. Animations are fun, but they are even better when they serve a purpose. 
our app has several micro integrations that interactions that were guided and motivated by Don Norman's principles of interaction design. Here are a couple to look for in the prototype. There are animations that are used to support mapping to help reorient the user because they switch devices. Visibility, there's a countdown to mark the transition into the streaming experience. And lastly, feedback, text entry and scrolling areas all respond to natural usage patterns. So after the define phase, we moved on to designing. Here are some of our sketches. After a design studio, we talked through problems the user might come to, how we could address those hiccups, and talked about design patterns that already exist that we might be able to use. Ultimately, we came to our conclusions and drew out a wireframe sketch that we would later iterate upon. So for our designs, we decided to replicate Live Nation's existing design system because we love their color scheme, typography, and style. And so after doing a design audit of the Live Nation mobile app, mobile website, and website, we found similarities between the atom elements and molecules, color and typography, and created our design system based off that. So this is our design system and mood board. When we put together our design system, we wanted to make sure our copy fit our audience and demographic, which is millennial music lovers. So we decided that our um, brand voice and tone would be very friendly and hip. And Matt did a great job writing UX copy that was clear, concise, consistent, and empathetic. Okay, so onto our prototype and our music loving millennial, Sam. So Sam's gonna find her concert from the app. So she's gonna go to the Live Nation app. And Sam wants to go to the Bruno Mars concert live in Boston. She's gonna click on details and she's going to get tickets. And she wants to invite two of her friends. So she's gonna choose three tickets. And she also wants a virtual room for her friends because she loves going to shows with her friends. And so this virtual room allows her to meet up with them even if they're geographically apart. So she's going to choose the virtual room and click next. She's going to add their email addresses, click next, and then check out. So when we were designing the checkout process, we kept Fitz law of human computer interaction in mind to make sure we were minimizing the time and interaction cost. Um, so when Sam is ready to purchase her ticket, she's going to put in her info, press continue, and she's going to have a confirmation screen. Um, we included um, this notification preference button because we noticed that in our user interviews that people prefer some kind of reminder system to let them know when their event is going to happen. So she's going to click set notifications. And Sam and all her friends will receive an email with the ticket order and another email with the link to the show. So she's going to select her notification preferences and she's all set. So the, this is the email that she's going to get with her ticket order. So she can join the streaming event from this link here, but she'll also get a no notification through text or email on the day of the show and she will get this pop-up dialogue in the app that alerts her that the room is open and she can enter the party through her phone. So uh, she'll click that link and she gets another pop-up that um, has instructions on how she can stream to her preferred device. And then the screen will transition into a countdown screen so that Sam knows when the show starts. And it also helps build anticipation to get everyone excited about the show. So here's our virtual pre-show room where Sam and her friends can hang out before the show starts. On the top right-hand corner here, we have um, an entertainment box where they can play artist trivia, discover more games, and they can even take screenshots of their room so they can have the memories uh, digitally. And uh, during the show, um, actually, uh, so there's this pre-show music button here that's kind of just 
um, a set playlist from Live Nation. They can toggle on and off if they want. There's also a chat function right here. Um, so they can talk throughout the show. And then dirt, uh, and they can, yeah. And so this is kind of showing the functionality. And during the show, uh, the audience will be automatically muted. So they can continue to use the chat function to talk with their friends during the show. Um, but the video function is still on up here. So they can you know, dance with each other, have some fun. And this timeline here will move throughout the duration of the concert. So they kind of know when the concert is going to end and where they're at. Um, and over here, you have the option to also send a message to the audience. So best song ever. And that is sent to the entire audience. Um, and so after the show, you might still want to still hang out with your friends and talk about the show. So the virtual room is still open, but the entertainment box is replaced by a um, merch store. And so you can check out the artist merch table and buy more items. Um, and this will help with revenue uh, for Live Nation. And from there, Sam will have tons of great memories to share with her coworkers on Monday. Wow, what a show. Oh my God. So to make this the best experience for Sam, we conducted three remote usability tests. And with it being the first round of testing, we really focus on qualitative data to understand the likes, the dislikes, the pain points, and errors made. We had two goals. Number one, users should be able to purchase tickets to a show. Number two, the user should be able to receive an email and join the live stream. And both goals were completed in 100% of our tests. So although all the users from our test reported that the overall experience was very smooth, uh, they had a lot of feedback. So we decided to focus on the ones that came up the most frequently. So First off, previously we didn't have any info about what the pre-show was about, so we had to add in that description. Um, and then button size uh, for the shop merch on the um, on one of the desktop screens was too small, so we addressed that by making the font larger. And finally, um, previously we had an email input in the checkout process and the notification setting screen, so we took one out because it was redundant. And so moving forward, we're going to <clears throat> definitely need to conduct more usability tests to see if there's any more confusion and see if there's any more iterations needed. So we learned a few things along the way. Um, it's a long list, but here's just a couple. Um, project plans and timelines are a must. As we were going along, these really kept us grounded. That way we could sort of, because we knew exactly what was ahead, we could focus on exactly what was right in front of us. Two more minutes. Play to your strength. Sorry? Two minutes, thank you. Um, play to your strengths. We all had to do things that we didn't wanna do, but we also took on roles that let us glow and grow in our areas of interest. The conversation around um, who would be doing what wasn't always easy, but really made sure that everybody's work and effort was honored, which was great. And lastly, show up for your teammates. Make space for stress and frustration and awkwardness and truth and laughter. Make space to learn because that's what it's all about. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank my teammates. Um, we'd like to thank ourselves because we all worked really, really hard. We'd like to thank our cohort, the academy, and our instructors who kept us on our path. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey bravo you did that Ooh, kudos awesome yeah go for it sorry someone was trying to say something i was just saying that was amazing that was great Awesome, cool. Again, let me uh, open up the floor to the team first, the class, um, Jason. Really great presentation, really great app. 
I am curious, why Bruno Mars? I think Matt can speak to that one. Yeah, I absolutely can. Um, I love that song. And when we were putting ourselves in the shoes of our millennial Sam, who's in San Fran, she's in the tech scene. It just made sense that she's a big fan of 24 karat magic gold. I see it. I see it. I like it. That's my boy. <laughs> Jake, what do you think? Well, first off, that was awesome. That was, I'm, I'm writing my glows right now, but uh, it's just so creative and looks so fun and I would absolutely do this. So great job. Um, my question is, and, and I might've missed it, so correct me if I did, but your usability test results really focused on, it seemed the, like the phone part of, of the experience. I was wondering if you got any feedback that you iterated on or were looking to iterate on when it came to the actual streaming portion, because that was like, that's the main deal to me. Like that looks like a ton of fun. I, I wanted to know if uh, you ran into any issues there. Rachel, you want to bring up that uh, slide that we, there were a few iterations on the slide that after the usability slide. So while we wait for that to come up, um, there were total, there was a ton of feedback on the, the live stream portion of this experience. Um, a couple of them had to do with the merch store. A lot of people actually felt that they should have been like smacked in the face with it and that it was almost too subtle. And one of the big iterations that we made, like the, as you had actually mentioned, there's certain priorities in what we did in this clickable prototype was we actually simply made the merch store button more visible. Um, it was kind of hidden. You were like, what's going on up here? Um, we had some other feedback that was really interesting that we didn't iterate it, but in future uh, iterations, we totally plan to incorporate it like a carousel option so that when you're looking in that post show screen, you can actually scroll through to see more than just the four items that were in the store. And that gives users more options, right? They feel like, oh my God, I can, I'd can. love to do this. It actually increases the chances for conversion. Rachel or Aubrey, you want to speak to any other of the iterations we made on those particular pages? So I actually, I can't remember the original comment, but um, the devices, the choice to put the um, the devices into devices was driven based on something about the streaming that it didn't it just whatever the word was it just wasn't connected it wasn't quite right and i thought it was because because of that like that lack of um context so that was one change that was made was to put the frame put it in a frame to address that issue thanks appreciate it great stuff and Julia, what did you notice? Loved it all around. I put this in your glow, but I it was really helpful, Rachel, as you were walking through the prototype to talk about your design decisions. Um, you had mentioned the the proximity and why you place things in, in certain places. And that was just very helpful and informative as you were actually going through it because we got to see it so close up. And then just a question about the so you see your profiles you know when you're all going like this really love those would those be videos or just photos of each other um are you talking about the desktop feature yeah, yeah so this would be kind of like a zoom like what we have on zoom right now so it would be a video function um and then you have the option to also chat and this is more useful during the show when you're actually not everyone's muted um so you can kind of while the show is happening you can have a conversation um through the chat function and leo to bring us home 
amazing job guys what i just left leave that out there and answering kind of on jason question why not bruno mars man um <laughs> I do have one uh, question as a potential user of this app, um, kind of like at the confirmation stage, I would expect after I, you know, get the notification or set my preferences, um, when that pop-up comes and says you're all set, I would expect, because I think I'm finishing, I would expect kind of that wording, finish. Um, I'm just curious of what made you guys choose find another show like um what what is your goal for using that wording um i was trying to promote like discoverability so after they come to this pop-up they're completely done with the purchase pro process for the bruno mars show but maybe they want to you know look at other what other shows are available maybe on a schedule another event. So this allows them to know that that's an option that they can go back to the home page and find something else. So I thought of that, but I didn't want to assume. Thank you. Well, great work, you guys. This um, really was a, a, a callback to my past uh, life in the industry. So I really, really wanted to call out the fact that you had such a strong focus on something we've talked about over and over and over again. Um, and you obviously had such a deep understanding of it. And that is that your solution has to fit in that spot between meeting the user's needs and meeting the business's needs. And the fact is that this business does not make its money off selling tickets to people to sit in chairs. It makes the money off the VIP rooms and the merch and the subsequent materials and the licensing and, and all of that stuff. And so the fact that you understood that from the beginning and were able to talk about that at the very top of the presentation, let me know that I was in good hands as you were about to keep going, that you understood the business, uh, the fact that you uh, had that subject matter expert to, to be talk to, talking to about what role can live streaming play going forward? Is that something we really need to be aggressive about adding to our business models now? Uh, I thought that was really thoughtful and showed a fantastic understanding of the business. Um, and merch and meetups i mean it's just it was just inspired um anybody can live stream but uh adding the merch in there especially if you could buy merch before the show if you could buy merch like if you could spend 99 cents and get a bruno mars background for your for your image like put you on a bruno mars album cover for your image while you're in the chat i mean um there's so much money, y'all. There's so much money you can make for the company with this. So really great job. You didn't just solve the user's needs, but you opened up potentially a fantastic new revenue stream for a business that's in a huge paradigm shift right now. And um, I was extremely impressed with your understanding of strategy and application of that. I'll kick it to Deja and Sophia. Yes, definitely plus one to what Huli said. Um, this is this is exactly the the part of where you incorporate the ability for the user to purchase merch um, right there from the streaming application is is a great way, a great job in terms of meeting the user needs and the business needs as well. Um, because for as a user, you don't want to leave, like if you're there live, you don't want to leave your seat to beat the lines or to be in line um, to get merged. And at the same time, you do want something that kind of commemorates your um, experience. And even, or let's say, for example, if you're there with a date, then um, it's easy to purchase merch and then like send it to that person, I, I think is, it, you know, again, I think having that ability to purchase merch is really, really great. 
And then I put in the Zoom chat, I think, um, like, way to go on like making people feel like as if they had front row seats. And so you have that front row seat experience without having to pay a uh, front row seat price. And so, and from a, uh, just a business um, and safety point of view, you really can only sell so many front row seat tickets, right? And so if you give everyone the ability to have that experience, um, it, it really expands the market and um, allows more people to, to have that experience. So I thought that was great. It um, immediately made me think of um, Shangela. I don't know if ever anyone knows Shangela, the drag queen on uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. Uh, she broke her leg in so many different parts when she did the death drop on a stage. Uh, she went back home to her mom in Texas. And, um, but she's, you know, still had her tickets to go see, to go see Beyonce, who she performs, um, Beyonce's uh, routines and stuff. And so um, she came to the live event, uh, to Beyonce's concert late. And uh, because security saw Shangela hobbling, <laughs> they automatically thought that uh, Shangela was part of the uh, Make-A-Wish uh, group of kids also because of Shangela's um, height um, so put uh, Shangela I think in in the you know the make-a-wish section was like front row and so Shangela was living but then of course imagine like even again if you're hobbling around it's very hard um, to have that concert experience so this also addresses um, folks with uh, that may not go to the concert because of accessibility issues, even though, yes, concert venues have accessibility. Um, it, it's, it's not necessarily accessible for everyone still yet. Um, so this is really, really awesome. So kudos. I'll pass it over to Deja. Yeah, you guys did awesome. Um music apps and anything related to this that you're gonna always be like a excitement um love that you guys chose bruno mars it was so funny i was thinking why bruno mars too and then as you went over who your persona was again i was like yeah 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 that checks out that that kind of went down the line um i think someone did mention it in the chat but i do want to call out i love the fact that you guys took that netflix party kind of framework and then translated it to this because I know when the pandemic first started and my friend was telling me about Netflix part I was like this is the coolest thing ever it's glitchy as heck this is the okayest thing ever so <laughs> to see it get a new coat of paint and be kind of adapted to this really fun thing that a lot of us have been missing out on real jealous of your persona going to those 10 concerts here I want to hang with that person but love the fact that you went with something that was already familiar so there would be that low learning Learning curve for a select group of people. I love that you stuck with the colors. I like that you made it fun without making it too campy because when it comes to music, games, anything related to kids, there's kind of this need to like put music notes everywhere or make it really bright flashy colors. You guys were able to make this elegant but still really fun which is a really hard balance for certain brands to walk and I think that you guys did it really really well so kudos. It was really really great. Thank you very much.